congratulations on, on your achievements. We, we've got together on a number of occasions this year, and we've talked about the initiatives. Just sum up for me where we are at the end of 2020. What new funds did you bring to bear in Egypt? Good morning, Minister. Good morning, Manas, and uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as you mentioned, our current portfolio of development financing is $25 billion. Uh, they are split up into 377 projects, multi-sectoral, and what we were able to do in 2020 uh, is secure uh, another $9.8 billion, uh, 3.2 of which go to the private sector, and they are also split up uh, across uh, various uh, sectors within the economy. Well, let's just talk a little bit about that. $9.8 billion is what was achieved this year. Uh, I know that electricity, transport, health were, were some of the core areas that you're focusing on. Where have been the biggest beneficiaries this year? So, you know, Manus, there was a fear at the beginning of uh, 2020 with COVID uh, that countries were going to be derailed from their sustainable development goals, uh, which were the common denominator across all nations uh, in 2015. And what we tried to do is to march ahead uh, with the SDGs across projects. So, as you mentioned, housing, transport, uh, renewable energy are some of the very important sectors that have uh, got uh, big tickets of funding. Uh, we also have social protection, agriculture, environment, uh, small and medium enterprises are others as well. Uh, so there has been a, a, a diversity uh, with respect to the sectors that benefit from this type of financing. And something else which is quite important is that they are done with different development partners. So you have the multilaterals, World Bank, EDRD, EIB, African Development Bank. You also have the bilaterals, uh, if they're AFD, USAID, uh, etc. And this really uh, means that we have been pushing ahead with our multilateral agenda as well. There was again fear at the beginning of 2020 that countries would be isolated, that multilateralism was sort of you know, uh, in the back burner. And you and I had uh, a talk during the new economy forum uh, this year. Uh, and I was mentioning that multilateralism uh, is alive, is there, and no country can do it on its own. And, and that's something that you, you've touched on a couple of times. You said multilateralism is alive and well. But can I come back to you and say, look, you, you've roll called a lot of agencies there. What was the hardest part or what is the most demanding thing that they ask you for that you've got to deliver? Uh, I find that uh, working with our development partners is an opportunity. And this is what we tried uh, to showcase uh, in our annual report. Uh, it was just issued last week uh, and it is uh, named or titled International Partnerships for uh, Sustainable Development, Writing the Future in a Changing Global Dynamic. And why do I say it's an opportunity? It's an opportunity to show uh, that a country such as Egypt, which has uh, very uh, important development financing across projects, has done well in the past. And that's why uh, mm. there was uh, enthusiasm to bring in more funds across different sectors to push ahead with this agenda. And all of this comes under the umbrella of what I have named economic diplomacy and the principles of economic diplomacy. Um, to, to sustain the momentum into 2021, all stories and all ministerial portfolios are obviously going to be reliant on what happens with COVID and what happens with vaccine. I want to get a sense in Egypt, um, in your role as uh, 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 international cooperation minister, um, have you been talking to any agencies on financing for vaccine for Egypt? Before I talk about the vaccine, if you take a look at uh, the report and there's an annex which is very elaborate on which sectors got what type of financing, uh, health is uh, there. There's a whole chapter on that and you can uh, see that with the World Bank, we've rolled out uh, universal health insurance. There's also been uh, uh, work with AFD, with the Japanese, with the Chinese. And um, really, we the first multi-stakeholder platform that we held in 2020 was for health. In terms of the vaccine, uh, Egypt is also part of the COVAX. We signed something last week. And also the Ministry of Finance, along with the Ministry of Health, are securing uh, vaccines uh, of around 50 million uh, to, uh, to the country. So this is all in the works. And we're hoping that this will, the first uh, two shipments arrived uh, from abroad, uh, and the Ministry of Health is, uh, is pushing forward uh, on that. Minister, one of, the, one of the themes that came up in discussions with, with the team, we have an entire bureau, as you know, based in Cairo. And they said, look, one of the big 
points of anxiety is that institutions are calling for the government to give more chances to the private sector to compete on some of the bigger or the huge projects. Um, is that something that you will encourage into 2021 or how do you respond to that? I respond to that and say that if you take a look at the portfolio in 2020, the 9.8 billion, you'll find that 3.2 have gone to the private sector. So around a third of that. And here you find uh, different uh, uh, development partners providing for that. What we want to do in 2021 is create more platforms uh, for private sector engagement. Uh, you know, Manus, that uh, environment uh, and climate change is high on everybody's agenda, also high on the development uh, agenda. And that's why many of the financial institutions are now rolling out uh, green tools of financing. And that is something that we want to create awareness for uh, in uh, uh, 2021. You know that Egypt issued its first green bond uh, a few months ago, and it was very successful. Uh, and this comes against the backdrop of very important infrastructure projects related uh, or are consistent with uh, uh, the climate and consistent with environment. So private sector engagement is going to be our theme for 2021 when it comes to multi-stakeholder platforms, when it comes to more uh, engagement, uh, so that uh, uh, you know projects which have been successful, like the BIM Ban project, uh, the biggest renewable energy project that we have and, and has got uh, a lot of global acclamation and also one of the flagship projects for IFC, more of those need to be rolled out and that is what we will be working on in 2021. But there's nothing that, uh, uh, you know, if you take a look at this year particularly, uh, uh, the private sector has got a decent amount of financing through development financing and this is what we are responsible for in the Ministry of International Cooperation. Minister, are you concerned about or aware of any risk of crowding out? Um, so, you know, if you take a look at uh, international project, uh, international um, reports this year, uh, World Bank report, IMF report, EBRD report, and I, I'm, I'm Egypt's governor uh, in several of these uh, institutions, during their annual meetings, uh, Egypt's story was singled out uh, as a country that has positive growth in 2020 and expectations for uh, strong growth in 2021. And this comes uh, on the back of very important infrastructure projects. E there, there has been uh, uh, outsourcing to private sector companies to be able to uh, actually contribute to these bigger projects, whether they're uh, uh, infrastructure, housing, water desalination. Uh, I've been around the country to many of these uh, development projects and you see Egyptian firms in Sinai, in Northern Sinai, for instance, uh, with the uh, development communities. So I believe that uh, what we have been trying to do, and please, I encourage everyone to take a look at the report on our website, our newly uh, launched website as well. Uh, what we try to do there is basically shed light uh, on what we call global partnerships narrative, people at the core, projects in action, and people and the purpose as the driver. And there you find that we identify for each project how it was carried out, and the private sector for sure uh, has been uh, quite instrumental. The phrase that you used a little bit earlier, I just want to get a sense of, of what it really means. Oftentimes we, we spend time with ministers of state um, and they tell us the things that uh, economic diplomacy. Um, what is economic diplomacy? So, you know, Manus, uh, uh, Ministry of International Cooperation uh, as a mandate is not always, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, fully understood. If you say Minister of Transport, people know what they're what they're doing. Minister of Health, people know what they're doing. When it comes to uh, international cooperation, I wanted to give a shorthand of like, what is it uh, that we are engaged in. We are responsible for Egypt's economic diplomacy. There are principles of economic diplomacy. First is uh, engagement uh, with uh, uh, all development partners globally. And we do that in multi uh, stakeholder platforms where we have line ministries uh, with us explaining what the future projects are and trying to collect, you know, collectively uh, engage the world with us on that. The second principle, uh, uh, the development financing, we map it to the SDGs uh, because 2030 is around the corner. We're nine years away from 2030 and most countries in 2015 under the UN have put a 2030 development agenda. So what we were very keen on doing is matching the development financing, the $25 billion, uh, which are our current portfolio, to the, these SDGs. And please, on our website, 
Go there, you'll see a map of Egypt with the different governors and how the SDGs have been uh, uh, met through different development projects. And the third uh, is global partnership narrative, trying to create a very transparent and consistent narrative across all our development uh, partners. And that narrative really has the beneficiaries or the people at the core identifying the projects if they're sovereign, if they're private sector, and then finally making sure uh, that we are able to match them again with the SDGs for the future. So in the uh, report, uh, you will find an appendix which includes our current portfolio matched uh, to the SDGs as well. So economic diplomacy is a term uh, which I believe, uh, uh, you know, has come very much into the center of 2020. Uh, everyone had to collaborate in different ways to get over uh, this pandemic or mitigate at least uh, the uh, negatives that will come out.